Hello, good morning or evening for some of you. Thank you very much for joining us today. My name is Leticia Samarripa, Director of Global Engagement in charge of the Intercultural Programs Office. To start or before we start, we're going to review very quickly some of our logistics for the event. Um, just to clarify, you can see and hear us, but we cannot see or hear you. Please submit your questions in the question box on the right side of your screen at the end of the presentation. The event is being recorded and you will be posted. Uh, it will be posted uh, within 48 business hours on our YouTube channel. You're welcome to visit our international student orientation webpage where you will find the hyperlink on our YouTube channel. Uh, next slide, please. OK, so today we have a very important session presented by the Office of Graduate Education at UT Dallas. This office supports graduate students across UTD and you will learn about the resources, events, and services that they offer. It is my pleasure to introduce Beth Cayley, faculty grant and distinguished fellowship advisor at the Office of Graduate Education. Beth, thank you very much for being here with us today, and I will let you present. Thank you. Thank you. It is my pleasure to be here. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for the time. Um, I know time is a precious commodity. So in fact, what I'm going to do is kind of spoil my talk up front. Um, you'll see the slides later, and I promise we will get into them. But um, there's two things I want you to remember from this presentation. One, we understand that being a graduate student is one of those things you don't do very often. So anytime you have a question and you think, hey, I feel like this is a service or this is a question that is a reasonable question and there should be an answer to it, but I don't know who to ask. Um, contact us. We have a main email box, graduation at utdallas.edu, and we answer it regularly. Part of our job description is to be in that box and, and check the box on a regular basis. So we are more than happy if you ever get an email from us that says, oh, that's not really our department, but the person you need to get in touch with is this. Um, that is part of our job to get you where you need to be. So please, anytime you have a question and you're not sure who to ask, ask us, we'll get you to the right place. So that I wanted you to know. And like I said, the email, the main email box is a good place to go when you think, hey, not only do I not know who to ask this question to on the campus, I don't even know who in graduate education to ask, so I'm just going to ask everybody. That is totally valid. So with that, I'd like to get started with the next slide, please. Perfect, thank you. One of the things I want to do is talk about UT Dallas. You've probably heard these stories before, but um, because we are a graduate, because we are the Office of Graduate Education and we started as a graduate school, we tend to like to brag about this. So we are going to brag about this for a second. Next slide, please. Thanks. Um, as you probably have heard from multiple people, and if you haven't, let me be the first to tell you that we started, we that our university was started by the founders of Texas Instruments. There is a lot of Texas Instruments still on the campus. We have a Texas Instruments auditorium. There is a statue of uh, Kirby on one of our holding a calculator at one of our, our lovely outdoor study spots. But we were started in 1961 as the Graduate Research Center of Southwest. And the whole point of that was that what the founders wanted, what Texas Instruments wanted, was to keep talent in Texas as opposed to having them leave to multiple states and multiple locations. But the key there is that it started as a graduate research center. So hopefully you're like, hey, we started as a graduate school. Next slide, please. 1967, we were renamed, and then in 1969, we became the University of Texas at Dallas, and at that time, we were just a graduate school. So next slide, please. 
you can see here, so I'm not going to read it to you, but keep in mind, it wasn't until 1990 that our first freshman walked on this campus. So while that is not yesterday for a university, that is fairly unusual for two reasons. One, freshmen were the last to join. Usually it's the opposite. You sort of start with undergraduate and then move into graduate. We did it the exact opposite. So a lot of our school is set up for graduate education because that's what we've always done. Next slide, please. So the mission of UT Dallas is to become one of the nation's best public research universities and then one of the greatest universities in the world. And you can see here it's a focus on research. So hopefully you are coming and planning to do research, whatever that looks like for your discipline. And we're just going to move on to the next slide, please. So we really do want to be uh, innovative in transdisciplinary research and education. I want to take a minute to just kind of what does that mean? I think a really good example of that is the number of collaborations we have on campus between various schools. So exam for example, our School of Economics, uh, Pol Political and Policy Sciences has many collaborations with our School of Engineering and our School of Ma Management has partnerships with and I understand I'm going to say engineering a lot. A lot of the partnerships are with engineering. School of Management has partnerships with engineering. Uh, engineering has partnerships with um, our School of Brain and Behavioral Sciences. And lots of schools are working together to do things that because it isn't just you're going to be in one discipline forever. That's really not how things work, right? You end up as in your career, you end up all over the place doing different things. So the more depth and width you can have in your education, the better. And that is one of the things we really pride ourselves on. One of the other things we pride ourselves on, and I think this is on the next slide, please. Yep, is our number of international students. Uh, we have representatives from over 150 countries. And while a third of our students are graduate students, about um, we have our graduate students are predominantly international students. So if you are concerned about not feeling welcome here on campus, please, 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 you will be welcome. We will be glad to have you. We do pride ourselves on our international numbers. In fact, our dean of uh, our dean of graduate education is also in charge of um, the international edu group. So there's definitely that that synergy and that partnership between the two groups. Um, there's plenty of things for you to do. There are 350 campus organizations. Almost every school on campus has a graduate student association or program or, you know, group. And not only do the schools have them, but a lot of the departments have them. So bioengineering has a really active one. Criminology has a very active one. Chemistry has a very active one. And those are just the three I can think of off the top of my head. So there are plenty of opportunities for you to get involved in both social and research things. So I do highly recommend you make sure you get out of your lab, away from your research group, and explore some of the other things on campus that we do. So next slide, please. All right, I want to talk about us now. I kind of breezed through that, but that's one of those things you've ever never heard before or probably have heard a hundred times. So I just kind of wanted to move forward from there. So let's just talk about my office, which is the point of today, the Office of Graduate Education. Next slide, please. Perfect, thank you. So. Our mission within, so within the bigger picture of the university, um, our goal is to get students to a high level of expertise, help them make discoveries, and then collaborate with faculty so that graduate education within UT Dallas continues to develop and improve. So what does that look like? Next slide, please. Actually, I think this is our a little more specific, our commitment. Yeah, okay. So this here, grad education at utdallas.edu, that is in that main mailbox that I recommended or that I, I talked about up at the top. This is a good email address to have. Please, please, please keep this in your back pocket, put it on your phone, 
whatever. We exist in person in the Founders Annex. We're in 3.104. So you can come visit us at any time. But a lot of times, like I said, you might not want to do it. It's really hot here today. I wouldn't want to walk across campus if I didn't have to. Um, so you can definitely stop by to visit, but you can just send your question in the email. We'll get back to it very quickly. And you can see we're on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I will tell you we are most active on Twitter, but you, if you are on social media, you should pick the social media avenue of your choice. Next slide, please. Okay, so here's our staff. A lot of these are, I'm looking at my picture, which is clearly pre-COVID due to hair length, but you know, this is still mostly what I look like. Uh, I mentioned uh, Dean Gonzalez up top. He is our Dean. You will probably see him. He's an extremely social person. So he likes to come to, if we've got an event on campus, he is very much likely to be there. We also have Ruth Shimmer and I'm not gonna introduce everyone. I'm just gonna kind of give some highlights. Um, Ruth Shimmer is our Director of Graduate Student Success. So she, I work for her directly. And what we do as part of the team, and the team is Ruth, Leela, and myself, what we do is put on events and workshops to uh, help students succeed. So in the fall, we have a week that is called um, Grad Professional Week. And then in the spring, we have Graduate Appreciation Week. So in the fall, we'll do events like the faculty three-minute thesis where you can see the faculty members compete and talk about our research. We'll also do workshops on things like job documents and you know CVs and resumes, kind of what that stuff looks like to help you develop as a professional. And then in the spring, we do things like yoga and we had um, puppies on campus and all of that good stuff so that it's more fun. But and it's definitely taking you know, we go out to different uh, schools and we feed you and that kind of thing. So those are the events that we are doing. Um, what I do is I work with students and help them find external funding. So that is money not from UT Dallas that goes to students, including uh, UT Dallas student. I've got many workshops and recordings and things like that. So I look forward to meeting all of you and having that um, having that opportunity to talk to you, even if you don't end up applying for a fellowship and you just want to learn about grant writing and how that is different from academic writing, uh, I'm I'm there for you. Uh, Eric is the assistant dean. He is probably the main person you'll get emails from in the graduate education box. I want to introduce him because we've got the way our office is set up is basically in two groups. We have what we call student facing. So like myself and Leela and Ruth, and there'll be more people you'll see in a minute, the, the dissertation readers. And we work one on one with students. You will you will see us, you will talk to us. It will be great. I'm not suggesting for a second that Eric and his team hide in a cave somewhere, but what they do is a lot of behind the scenes things, working with policy and making sure, working with the schools and your advisors to make sure your degree plans are moving forward correctly. So oftentimes what will happen is a student will come ask me something because they know me and that's great. And I will send them to Eric because it's more of a policy thing. So if you have questions about um, how you're TA ship or your RA ship is working or if your classes are working or if there's some issue with your UTD experience, you're probably going to go talk to Eric and that's fine. Uh, next slide, please. And there will not be a quiz later about any of these names, <laughs> so just just so that you know these people exist. Um, Stephanie and Brooke and Crystal are on Eric's team and then we've got graduate readers. Uh, what they will do is help you if you're a master's student and you have a thesis that you're working on, they will work with you on that. If you are a PhD student and you've got your dissertation, they will work with you on that. And we also have a very new uh, writing services person, Elizabeth Miller. I know at the moment she is working to put together writing groups in the fall. So if a writing group is something you're interested in doing, take a look at the email. And if we could just get next slide, but I want to pause and say for a second, okay, I get it. You will get 
a million trillion emails from every department at UTD and it will feel correctly like you're getting too many emails. Um, we have tried to put our emails, we send our emails on Monday. It's all our upcoming events for the period. We do not send an email if we don't have something to tell you. So we don't have events right now. We have not sent out a Monday newsletter. Please look at that email because there's a lot of information about pretty much what we try to do in that Monday email is make it so that that's the only thing you need to look at to get an idea of what's coming up in our office. So events, uh, announcements of when internal funding, so UTD money, so money from my office to UTD students, when those open, that goes into the Monday newsletter. So just, I know you get a lot of emails, but just start to get in the habit of when you see an email from grad education at utdallas.edu on Monday, take a look at it. If the events appeal to you, you know to sign up. If the events don't appeal to you, you just delete it and move on. Next slide, please. I want you to read all your emails, but I also know I don't read all my emails, so the hypocrisy would be too much. Um, one of the things we do is, in addition to helping students get answers to their questions, is we work with part we work with other offices on campus in order to get their services out to you and for you to be aware of them. So we do events with the University Career Center. I mentioned uh, the job documents. Um, Presentations, we will often work with the University Career Center so that we will have academic job searches information and non-academic job search information. That's important because the documents are different. It's a CV or a resume. Um, do you need a teaching statement? Not if you're not going into academia. So we make sure to separate those out. Uh, the library, we will talk about the services in the in the library and partner with them on a bunch of things. If you're doing research, for example, and don't have an ORCID number, which probably doesn't mean anything to several of you, um, we will walk you through that very easy process and tell you why you need one. Uh, we have a very active military and veterans center on campus. A lot of our graduate students who are um, in the military or our vets are in the School of Management. But we've also got a wellness center, a counseling center. This fall, UT system, as part of a UT system partnership, we are going to be able to give all students access to 24 7 free virtual mental health services. So look for your, uh, look in your email for that. One of the things we worked with on the Office of Research was health insurance for all graduate students. So, yay, that finally happened. And the Center for Teaching and Learning. Um, they have many programs on teaching. So if one of the things you want to do is become, is to have a job in academia, you can get a certificate in teaching from that group and that will really help make you stand out in any of the academic job searches, right? If you are certified in, in teaching, that will help you. So next slide, please. This is just to give you an idea of some of the workshops we have done. Um, these are all from the spring, but we have a three minute thesis competition where students can win prizes. We do yeah, networking. Um, we, I do a whole series on fellowships and grants. The H index probably again doesn't mean anything to you uh, right now, but that's one of those things we do with the library. I do a regular finding funding for international students. We do a dissertation research award you can read as well. And we work with this wonderful office on our global grad social. So we usually have two of those a year and that is a huge amount of fun. I hope to see you at one of those. But this gives you an idea of just, you know, we've got things that we're doing with the wellness center here with the self-compassion in the, uh, lower right corner and then in the lower left corner we've got basic finance for international students you can see we're just doing all kinds of events and this is why again monday those mondays when you open the newsletter and look at the newsletter not everything is going to be in, of interest to you every week but that's where you're going to hear about the things that we're doing for the things that you are interested so if you're looking at one of these presentations and thinking oh hey i want to go to that um you can find out about it in the Monday newsletter. Next slide, please. 
I also highly recommend, I mentioned that each department and school have their own graduate student group. I highly recommend being a part of the GSA as much as possible. Each school has a representative in the GSA, but when I mentioned the health insurance thing, that was a uh, an initiative that uh, the GSA started uh, and worked with our dean and the Office of Research. They get stuff done. So I recommend definitely taking advantage of the fact that this group exists. They do social events, but they also do advocacy for things that are important for graduate students. They give graduate students a voice. We have, for example, um, in our office, a monthly meeting, which is all of the schools, uh, basically, a, every school has a, a member, faculty level, has a member on our graduate council. And every, we meet every month, or they meet every month. The GSA, this Graduate Student Assembly, also comes to that meeting and they have time every month on the agenda to talk about issues that are coming up. So that is the, if you think, how do I get a voice? How do I get my issues heard? Uh, the GSA will get your issues heard. So please, 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 please be active, contact them, use them for both social events and, you know, issues and when they come up. Next slide, please. So I mentioned that we had student facing and non student facing. So I'm going to get a little more specific on that on the services that we offer um, fellowship support. That's me. Um, I offer a grant writing certificate program. It is like the teaching certificate. But if you think your future career involves grant writing, either because you want to go into academia or because you want to go into nonprofit work, um, that is a program that will that if you go through, you will draft a grant, it will go through a review process, and at the end, you will get a certificate and again, something to put on your CV. Um, we have a dissertation research award, which none of you are ready for, um, but just something to keep in mind that when you are ready, that helps you uh, either get your, either improve the information that is part of your dissertation or helps you get your dissertation done a little faster. Workshops on application money, and we do have uh, some travel money for students to travel to conferences, and that is open to both masters and PhD students. So that is something to be aware of. Then we also have thesis and dissertation support. When we did the staff, I pointed out Allison and her team, Alyssa, Bradley, and Elizabeth, they will help with virtual defenses. So currently our rule is that you can have your defenses in person or virtual, but not hybrid. And one of the reasons why that is our rule is because we have noticed that the hybrid ones don't go particularly well because you're sort of talking to the people in the room with you, you're sort of talking to the people on the screen, and it doesn't usually work out. But if everybody's on a screen, great. And if everybody's in person, also great, we can help you with with uh, both of those things. But we do offer some support for the virtual defenses, including, hey, you want to use our Zoom link? Yes, go ahead and use our Zoom link. But then also for your dissertation and thesis, there are rules about how they need to be formatted and the approval process. We help you with that process so that Yes, you have to write it. Yes, you have to format it, but we help you know what the policies and procedures are there so that we don't go, well, hey, you should just sense that in the force. Uh, next slide, please. These are what I mentioned with Eric and his team about the, the internal uh, so that you might not talk to them, but they are working behind the scenes to help you get things done. A degree certification and verification, what that means is that we make sure that your degree plan has been correct. You have taken the classes that you need to take in order to graduate and that when you think you're ready to graduate, we agree that you are ready to graduate. Also for teaching and research assistants, I want to take a moment. We do not hire teaching or research assistants. That is done on the school level for a variety of reasons. Mostly our opinion is the schools know what they need better than we do, and we do not want to tell them what, what needs to happen. 
So if you come to us asking us about a teaching or research assistant, we will send you to your school. But what we do is because there are school level policies and then so school like the School of Engineering or the School of Behavioral and Brain Sciences or the School of Management. So there's those individual levels. And then we also have University of Texas at Dallas, University Texas system, you know, federal rules about policies and compliance issues. We take care of those for you so that you you know about them, you don't get into trouble, but there are many things that happen behind the scenes. And so we take care of those for you. Again, you might have an entirely wonderful experience at UTD and never talk to Eric, Stephanie, or Brooke. That is fine. They're getting things. You might have a wonderful experience at UTD where you do talk to them, and that is also fine. It just depends on your experience. But if you don't talk to them, don't worry about it. That's what they're doing for you. Next slide, please. There are some online tools for you. I wanted to point these out. We will definitely be having workshops on them and introducing them to you. But these are things that as a UTD student, you have free access to. So there's the Beyond the Professor Soriot, which is a professional development training platform. What does that mean? That basically means if you are a PhD student, postdoc, um, we can, they, this service helps you understand what you need to do in order to have an academic or non-academic career. So if you're a PhD student, this helps you with the job search, putting together the documents and all that good stuff. For our master's students, it, that's just different, right? PhDs and master's students have different experiences. You're getting different degrees. So for the PhD student, it's beyond the professoriate. The same services for master's student, it's called beyond grad school. You've got the URLs right there use which one works for you based on who you are. And then we have the National Center for Faculty Development and Diversity. That is a group that does a lot of, um, that has a lot of online training. It is mostly designed to help people in academia survive academia. My favorite thing about this site is that they have virtual writing groups and writing, um, writing challenges, like 14 day writing challenges, where you can get with an online peer group and get into the habit of doing regular daily writing. But that is because that is that is my bias. There are a lot of really great programs on this site as well, the facultydiversity.org, which talk about things like mentorship, putting together a, uh, you know, a plan for the semester, um, do you know there is a dissertation writing plan on there you can go through the whole series of improving your dissertation so there are a lot of excellent tools depending on what you want there like i said i'm tend to be biased towards the writing stuff but that doesn't mean everything isn't good that just means that's what i mostly go to that site for but take advantage of these these are things that you have free access to please, please, please use them. There is no point in you not using them. There's no downside. Next slide, please. Yep, I'm getting towards the end specifically, so we have a ton of time for questions. If you are on social media, I do recommend you follow us. Like I said, we're most active on Twitter, but uh, Facebook and Instagram, especially if you're looking for events information, that's a good place. And please, grad education at utdallas.edu. Even if you're like, I don't remember who did that orientation for us that I went to on June 28th. Don't remember. I'm just going to write grad education at UT Dallas and hope that um, if I ask the question about something she said, she will get to it. I will get to it. I look. I am in that box, like I said, at least once a day, often twice or three times because that is part of my job. And with that, I am going to yeah open it up for questions i'm right on time for where i wanted to be so if you have any questions comments concerns i can't answer all of them but between me and this team of wonderful people who are here i suspect we can get through a lot of them thank you very much for this very comprehensive presentation beth and as you mentioned we are opening the q a for questions 
Uh, feel free to write your questions. We'll do our best to answer most of them. Uh, of course, uh, the concentration should be questions about the Office of Graduate Education, but if while being here we can answer any other question, we'll be very pleased to do so. Yeah, I agree with that completely. No, oh, perfect. I see Rodolfo is putting in a bunch of links. Thank you so much. These are great. And I see that the email address is there too. Yes, please start taking advantage of that. I know a lot of this stuff is just sort of future notes for you and that's fine. What I want to have happen is when you get to campus and think, you know, when you're on campus or even a couple of years in when you think, oh gosh, I knew there was something, I think there's something for this, you, you just can come to our office and we can direct you. That's one of the things I really do want students to walk away with because I know as graduate students you are taught to be extremely independent and self-reliant and that that is great, but also our office exists to help you. So we are here to help and get you to who you need to get to, even if it is not us. There is nothing wrong with asking. <laughs> I do it all the time in my emails to other people. Um, I see the question I'll get to in just a second. Um, I ask all the, you know, I'll send this email all the time. I don't think you're the right person, but I know you probably know who the right person is. So a question, could you share three recommendations for grad academic success at UT Dallas for new international students? Yes, yes I can. And they are these. Um, and in fact, probably they would be for graduate academic success for all new students, but let's do this. One, you need to take, you need to find something that is not research and not academics as a as a it's a hobby or something else to do, but you need to make sure that your life 24 seven is not eating, sleeping and researching. I don't care what it is as long as it's good for you. So if it's playing video games, fabulous. If it is reading a book, fabulous. If it is volunteering at the comic cupboard because you like to help people, fabulous, but find something that is important to you to do that is not not studying and research and you're going to think beth the question was graduate academic success and i'm going to say yes and if all you are doing is grinding yourself down because you are doing research and studying you will not be successful you will burn out so that's my first one my second one and again i said i have a writing bias so i have a writing bias get yourself on a writing schedule have time every day set aside for you to be researching something that you need to be writing, writing something that you need to be writing, but that you have scheduled that time with yourself because it is very easy to get behind on your writing and then you are scrambling to get things done. So those two things and then take advantage of all of the workshops and the resources that are available to you. I hear from a lot of students, um, especially master's students, because you're just not here very long, right? And you're on your final year and you hear about a travel award and you're like, ah, my whole experience would have been different if I had known that I could have gone to conferences or if I had known that um, there was somebody I could talk to about non-academic jobs. So take advantage of all the resources available to you. And that will sometimes mean, yes, you've got to go to workshops, but it is worth it to understand all of the tools that are here for you. So those are my three. Find something that's not work to do. Get yourself on a writing schedule and take advantage. Do not come, come up and look around and see what else is going on at UTD that can help you outside of your department and classes and research. Let's see. 
is it possible to get a fellowship or scholarship for the incoming fall term? Um, that is a challenge. I'm I'm not going to say no, but I am going to say probably not. One thing about fellowships, and I, if I can find the link real quick, um, one of the things about external fellowships is it can take up to a year to get the funding by the time you put in the application. The internal ones, so like I said, UTD for UTD students are a little faster, um, but um, it 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 is ch you unfortunately with fellowships and scholarships you need to be thinking a little further out. I will see if I can find a link real quick while I'm answering questions. Multitasking is not my best skill, but um, I do have on my website an internal list. Let's see. The undergraduate university doesn't provide a degree certificate until 2024. Uh, oh. I see somebody else is replying to this. I'm going to go to the published questions here. From your perspective, what are two common challenges of graduate international students and how to overcome such challenges? This is a really good question and I am glad for it. There is a lot of cultural differences in academia between wherever you are from and the US. And I think one of the common challenges is figuring out what those cultural differences are. So, for example, um, in some in some countries, there is a tradition of not. And I don't want to say challenge in terms, but in terms of, you know, asking questions, you just listen to the professor and you accept all that information and you do not ask questions. Um, the American tradition is you ask questions. So if you don't know something or you're not understanding something or something is unclear to you or you have another point, like I, even if you're just saying yes and, um, that is something you should do. Um, but that goes to the, um, depending on what your culture is. So that's one of the challenges, figuring out what the cultural differences are between your home country and the US and working through that. Um, what is the other challenge? So the, so the way to overcome that is to ask, and I'm sorry for the group, I'm like, don't, there's a tradition of not asking questions, but the best way to overcome that is to ask questions. Uh, how, you know, how would this work? How would you like me to do this? Um, is it okay to do this? We because there are so many international students on campus and we love that about our campus. But if you are an international student and you say, in my home country, this is true, is this true here? We're, we're happy to answer that question. This is basically asking us to talk about ourselves. We love talking about ourselves, let us do it. Um, so I think that is, is the one main challenge. And I think one of the other challenges can be Again, because there are so many graduate international students, it can be easy to find. It can be hard to find others, you know, you can it's very easy for you to find your group of students who might very much be people from your home country and it is hard to go out, you know, to meet people outside of it. I do think doing the social things and trying to meet other people and networking um, is a challenge because sometimes they're hard to find, but it is worth finding them and um, helping and, and meeting and getting a different perspective. But it can be, it is distinctly possible that you will come to UTD and you'll think, I'm going to network and meet different people. And what happens is you pretty much end up hanging out with your same, your same group of international people. That being said, I love, one of the things I love about this campus is when I am walking across campus, I will hear so many different languages and I love that and I hope that never changes. But um, do try to meet other folks from other places. I think those are my two. Um, oh, when can I start grant writing? Um, so the Grant certificate program will start in the fall. I will have an information session that you can come to. It will probably be over Teams. What I tend to do is if I'm mostly going to be talking to you, um, it will be over Teams. And if it's going to be more of a workshop, uh, we will come together. 
Um, so I will have a workshop on that in the fall, and then it's a very easy application. Um, calling in an application is probably giving it a little too much. And um, but then, yeah, you can get started. So this fall. I'm going to go ahead. I think this is going to work. I'm going to put the link for the um, to the question about, you know, can I get one for the fall? I've put in the link here for the uh, internal resources. Websites have been being developed, and I know, for example, this website still has two art schools, which isn't correct anymore. So if for some reason these links don't work, just please go ahead and email me and say the link didn't work. Let's see. Is the let's see. OK, common challenges. When can I start grant writing workshops? Um, oh, yeah, if you're planning to apply for grants this next summer, um, perfect. Let's go ahead. You can meet with me in advance. Um, but like I said, in the fall, we'll do the grant writing certificate program. But if you're looking specifically to write a grant, I will have a finding funding event in the fall as well. Come to that, Brenda, and then you and I can start meeting one on one to do that discussion. I do not know if teaching assistantship stipends are taxable. I have no idea. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know anything. I'm sorry. I do not know anything about the stipends or the taxes related to it. I also think based on what little I know about taxes, it also depends on what your other earnings are. So I am going to say if your advise if your academic advisor doesn't know, which is distinctly possible. Um, we do have a financial group on campus. Let's see if I can find them. Sweat comment sense UTP. They would probably know. Yeah. So sorry. I wish I knew, but I do not. Oh yeah, Rodolfo, you're right. Payroll can provide for, yeah. Payroll would also be very useful there. Okay, well, it looks like we're done with questions. Uh, feel free, as Beth mentioned, to keep writing the Office of Graduate Education with any further questions you may have or for general topics, uh, please uh, write us at icprograms uh, at utdallas.com. Uh, please uh, send us any questions uh, that you may have. We really appreciate your joining this session today. And of course, we thank Beth for this wonderful presentation. Uh, this is an office that we work together with all the time, so you will see us with them working together in some of our upcoming events. Thank you very much, everyone, and hope to see you in our next um, upcoming sessions. Thank you very much. Thank you. I look forward to meeting you all when you get to campus.